As of this morning, thousands of people are still cut off from their homes in B.C. Floods and mudslides have devastated the southern part of the province. And now, a new technique could be used to better predict rainfall and flooding events on the East Coast. And for more, we're joined by CTV's science and technology specialist, Dan Riskin, for another edition of This Week in Science. Good morning to you, Dan. Good morning. How are you? I'm good. I'm curious to learn more about this technique called network-based forecasting. How could this have help to better predict the flooding that we're now experiencing in BC? Well, I mean, we've sort of hit a, a bit of a limit on what we can do with conventional weather modeling, where we try to take all the pieces and, and play it forward through a model and come up with what the rain's going to be like in a few days. So this is like a, a back to the drawing board. Let's start with a different approach altogether. And scientists have applied this different mathematical tool that's, uh, that's quite different from what exists already. Uh, as you said, it's called network-based forecasting. And using it, they've looked at a whole bunch of phenomena around the world that need to be predicted that we don't predict very well yet. So uh, one is uh, monsoons in India. Those have a huge impact on the economy there. They decide you know, when agriculture is going to jump into full swing, um, and it can vary quite a lot. Right now, uh, India gets about five days warning. They're saying with this new mm. technique, they could get more than a month of warning so they know when those rains are coming. This could also be used for polar vortices coming off the North Pole, giving us more than a month warning for those big freezes that we get here in Canada when those come down on us. Um, also, extreme rain in the Andes, droughts in the Amazon. They've used this in a whole bunch of different places. Uh, they, they haven't used it for the west coast of Canada yet, but of course, with a technique like this, it's just a matter of putting the numbers into the computer. Other than the time frame and the, and the warning it now gives us. How is this different than what climate scientists are using right now? Well, it's not meant to replace what's being used right now. It's meant to uh, to complement it. And what, what basically the way this works is instead of, so what, what's done right now is you take the pressure and you take the temperature in all these different places and you feed them into a model and then you play that forward like a, like a video game almost where it plays forward and says, well, here's where this wind's going to move and then that air is going to move here and this air is going to go here and you can kind of play it forward for about a week. Uh, this does a totally different approach where it looks at events around the world, doesn't try to understand how they're connected with each other, but takes all these events that are correlated in time over history and then feeds them into an algorithm on a computer with artificial intelligence where the computer says, hmm, this is weird. When it, when it rains in, in Belgium, uh, often we see a drop in humidity in the Amazon. And I don't know why that happens, but it seems to happen. So if we look at all these connections, we can make some predictions. And so it's a big network with these nodes and the computer doesn't really understand how they're talking to each other, but it sees these patterns and using data from, from history, uh, it can show that these predictions would be much more effective and give a lot more warning than what exists already. It seems like the tool that's missing. We were just speaking with Peter Wood, who is a forestry uh, management expert, and he was talking about a report that he'd done taking a look at all of the conditions in the area, increased logging, all of the fires, and what it does to the soil and the topography that leads to overland flooding and mudslides, which is what we're experiencing in B.C. right now. They had their second Absolutely. worst fire season on record in the province of B.C., and, and now we're seeing the flooding and we're seeing the mudslides. Uh, this is an incredible tool. Yes. So this tool is is based on what's happened in years past, and what you're what you're alluding to is is a, a big piece of the puzzle, which is the way things are changing. So so yes, a, a big fire changes the penetrability of the ground to water. How much rain there's been over the last month, and there was a lot of rain in the in the Fraser Valley before this event. So the the water uh, the ground was waterlogged already to a large extent. That diminished its ability to take up that water. So it ended up flowing over land and going into those rivers. Um, all these pieces come together, but as climate changes, it's a real it's a real problem because you can't use necessarily what was true 50 years ago and, and what we learned from that to predict what's going to happen now because we do have these changes and one of the big things from uh, climate change of course is that the frequency of these extreme events is predicted to increase and so we're going to be dealing with more and more of these extreme events and so it's all the more important for us to be able to model them ahead of time see them coming and then take uh, take action before it arrives yeah and use this as an opportunity to maybe move things forward dan always good to talk to you thanks so totally. much Thank you. All right. Hey, thanks for watching. If you liked this, be sure to subscribe here, or you can check out more Your Morning videos right here.